Welcome to your weekly UAS news update and we have three stories for you this week. The FCC is set to vote on new rules that could impact covered list entities. You'll see why this makes sense. Uh, DJI is appealing the Chinese military company court ruling. And then lastly, we have a drones for good story in New York State. So let's get to it. And first up, the FCC is making some moves that could affect some manufacturers of drones uh, that are selling in the United States. FCC Chairman Brendan Carr announced that the agency will vote on October 20th, which is right around the corner, to close two major loopholes that companies on the covered list have been using. Now, if you're not familiar with the covered list, we're going to talk about it in a minute, but that's the list where the FCC uh, doesn't allow you to get approval for the devices that you uh, produce. Now, the proposed rule here would do two things. First, it would prohibit the authorization of any new devices that contain components that are part of a covered list company. And then second, they would also give the FCC the power to revoke previously issued authorization in specific cases. Now, this vote is happening just as DJI faces a December 23rd deadline from the National Defense Authorization Act. If a security review is not completed by then, then DJI would be added to that covered list that we just mentioned. Now, the FCC stuff that we've seen is not necessarily geared towards DJI or even Autel, which is also going to be uh, added to the covered list just like DJI is. But this is uh, this could be a direct shot at the strategy that we've been discussing with companies like Sky &E, uh, Sky Rover, Jovi Stars that have been popping up where they essentially are rebranding DJI drones. Now, according to the press release uh, from the FCC, they may also have an NPRM, a notice, notice of proposed rulemaking to follow, but the rule could also prevent the import and the sale of devices that are already approved. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on this one. Uh, this could have some consequences. And then next up, in a related story, uh, DJI is appealing a federal court decision that uh, kept it on the Pentagon's Chinese military company list. Uh, this is something that we talked about last week, I think, or the week before. Uh, this is a really interesting case, actually, because DJI is pretty much in a, a legal paradox, if you want, where it seems like they have won based on the facts, but they actually lost in court. On September 26, a DC district court judge ruled that DJI would remain on the list, but the judge decision explicitly rejected most of the Defense Department core allegations. Uh, the court found that there was no evidence that DJI is owned or controlled by the Chinese uh, Communist Party or that it's linked to a military civil fusion enterprise, which is something that they were uh, being accused of. The court only upheld two of the Pentagon's claim, the first one being that DJI holds a National Enterprise Technology Center status, which the court acknowledged is widely granted to innovative tech companies, including some of the companies in the United States. Uh, the second one was that DJI has substantial dual-use application, which is also true for tons of off-the-shelf technology. It's kind of like saying that, you know, Toyota is a terrorist organization because some terrorists are using Toyota trucks to conduct their activity. Critically, the court here found that there's no evidence of actual misuse by the Chinese military. Uh, despite all of this, the judge deferred to the Pentagon's broad discretion, in quotation mark here, uh, on national security, keeping the label in place. Now, this designation restricts federal contract and, of course, spooks the private sector, which is a major problem when DJI still controls about 76 to 90 some percent, depending on who you're asking, of the U.S consumer drone market. Now, this appeal is a major test, I think, on whether or not these national security uh, designations are going to require hard evidence or just basic allegations. So DJI is appealing the court's decision, and we're going to keep you updated when we see more of this, but I'm sure it's going to take a little while. And then finally, this week, a Drones for Good story. I know those uh, happen and uh, we talk about them as much as we can. This is the Olean Police Department in upstate New York that used a thermal drone in order to rescue three kayakers that were in distress in the Allegheny River. Uh, the distress call came in around 8 p.m. and in the darkness, you know, traditional search would have been pretty difficult. Uh, instead, the police and the fire personnel quickly deployed their drone. It appears to be a Mavic 3 thermal. And then within minutes, the drone uh, was able to 
to pick up the heat signature uh, using the thermal sensor of two of the kayakers that were in the cold water. This obviously drastically cut down the search time and then likely prevented hypothermia from, uh, from those uh, people. And then the search team then shifted to the surrounding wood area and then they located the third person that was on land. So this is a fantastic example of how this technology is becoming pretty much essential for departments of all different sizes. Now keep in mind, Olean here is a city of only about 14,000 people, uh, which shows that you don't really need to be a major metropolitan agency uh, to have life-saving aerial capabilities, which is really cool. Now we've seen time and time again, uh, thermal drones are a major force multiplier for first responders. So it's uh, all these stories like this that we love to show and then you know talk about the positive impact that drones have on the communities at large. And then this week on Post Flight, which is the show in the premium community where we talk about all different things and share our opinions more than we do on this version here. Uh, we're going to talk about these stories and then a $500 million, $500 million counter drone program that is going to be set up for the upcoming World Cup uh, that's happening in the United States. Um, have a great weekend and then we'll see you on Monday for the live. Mm -hmm.